you want six secret phrases to instantly persuade narcissists to do anything? I'm going to give them to you right now. Hey there, I'm Rebecca Zung, and I am the author of the USA Today bestselling book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with Narcissists and when. And I know what it's like to be on the receiving end of feeling powerless, of feeling like you just don't know what to do when you are dealing with somebody who is toxic in your life. And so I want to make sure that you have the phrases to make you feel like you can fight back for a change. That's what I'm going to give you by the end of this video. I'm going to give you six phrases so that you can actually have them in your toolbox and be able to have something at the ready to instantly persuade narcissists to do anything, whether you are dealing with them in a courtroom setting or in just your everyday life. I'm an attorney, but I also help people in everyday situations or whether it's a work situation. Maybe you're dealing with a colleague. Maybe you're dealing with your neighbor. That's what I'm going to give you today because persuading people, especially when you're dealing with somebody who's in a high conflict situation, is exactly what you want to be able to do. And when you can persuade people to do things, you literally have the tools in your hands to do anything. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe to this channel because I want to help you take back your power. I want to help you feel that weight off of your chest. I know that feeling of having feeling like you have that elephant on your chest and I want to help you get rid of that feeling so that you can actually breathe and take your life back. The very first one is I agree with your point about whatever it is. Maybe it's a specific thing. Maybe if you could just find like a shred of something that you can agree on. Maybe it's like, I agree that we're not going to agree on something, right? But if you can find something where they can feel like they've heard the word agree, that will help because you're just kind of fluffing up their ego. You know, I always say fluff her favor, vomit later. You give them a little something that they want, which is that adulation. You're fluffing up their ego. And then you can, you can start with that shred of something. It's like start with areas of agreement and then you work outward from there. So I agree with you on this. And then you go, okay, it, it shows that you are listening. It shows that you're starting a, from a positive tone and it shows that you are letting them know that they matter. My second book was Negotiate Like You Matter. And the reason why I called it that was because everybody wants to feel seen, heard, and know that they matter, but narcissists even more so. They literally have that feeling of the most pain, the most shame. They want to know that they're the only ones that matter, right? So you, you got to give them that narcissistic supply. And so if you can kind of fluff up their ego a bit, just so you can get what you want, you can go, okay, I'm valuing you. I'm valuing your perspective. And then go, how do you envision a perfect outcome for this? Let them tell you what it is that they want. So I agree with your point on this, but what's the perfect outcome for you? And then let them tell you, let them share their perfect aspirations. Let them tell you what their perfect outcomes are. It'll give you valuable insight into their goals. Let them pontificate on that. It'll help you, especially if you're negotiating with them, especially if you are in some kind of a deal with them, you do want to know what their positions are. You do want to hear what it is that they want. Instead of pushing and fighting back for a change, go, okay, I agree with you on this particular thing. Where, where is it that you see this going? What is it that you want? Let them talk for a minute. That's the first one. And by the way, if you are dealing with a narcissist or a high conflict personality in a negotiation setting, get my free crush my negotiation prep worksheet at winmynegotiation.com. It's a free 15 page ebook. It's literally hundreds of thousands of people have gotten it and won their negotiations just on that. It's totally free. 
So go ahead and get that for yourself too, and it'll help you. Okay. The next thing is we seem to both value blank. How can we use this common thing that we both agree on to address our challenges? So for example, if you are in a divorce situation, I know that we both want the best for our children. I know that we both value this. It's sort of like a neuro-linguistic programming or an embedded command. I know that we both, we saw this really take place. If you've ever watched Mr. Rogers persuade a congressman in the 1960s, it was like 1969, and he got in front of Congress to ask for millions of dollars. And he was literally a public access television guy who was kind of dweeby, really an unknown at that point. And he had this kids show and they did not really want to give him money. And he gets in front of these people and the guy that he had to go in front of, the particular congressman that he had to get in front of was known to be kind of a difficult person or whatever. And he goes, all right, Rogers, you got the floor. And really was not in the mood for him that day. But by the end of it, the way that he was speaking to him was, you know, I care about the future of children. They are, as I know you do because you know that they're the future of this country, as I'm sure you would agree. And the way that he was speaking with him, there was no way that this guy, the Senator Pastore was his name. There's no way that he was not going to agree with him. And that's kind of what you have to do. You identify a shared goal or a shared value, and you create a sense of unity around that. And that's how you can persuade that person, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve. Instead of you being at odds, you try to put yourself on the same side as the person and it works. Believe me, I've been doing this for a long time and I've been a lawyer for a very long time and I've had the most contentious of cases for a very long time. And this is how you get people to be persuaded to see your side and get to be working together. So that's number two. Number three is since we both agree on this, Let's explore solutions that would achieve our objectives. Again, we're leveraging your initial agreement and you are subtly guiding the conversation toward constructive outcomes. That's the next question that you can ask. The next one that you can ask is, what steps or do you suggest that we could take to get where we want to go? Instead of railing against, instead of going and being defensive, you can start asking them questions. This is really in the same vein of when I suggest to you, instead of responding with anger, to respond with curiosity. I've often said in my other videos to respond with curiosity. Well, that's interesting. Why would you say that? Or that's interesting. Why would you do that? Well, that's interesting. Why would you think that? This one is, you know, what steps do you suggest that we could take to get there? And then as they suggest that, say things like, I appreciate your insights and then validate their insights and say, oh, well, well here's how we could work toward more collaborative planning, and then continue to ask them for their input on that and continue to ask them for more phrasing for shared insight. So the more that you can ask them for their opinion, validate their insights, and look for ways that you can start with areas of agreement and then build on that, it definitely helps. And then asking for what their ideal scenario would be 
for resolving issues also helps. Given our shared interest, what would be your ideal scenario? Given our shared interest, what would be your ideal scenario? So that's another way that you can phrase that. Things that you want to stay away from. You want to stay away from being defensive. I would say never jade, never justify, argue, defend, or explain. You want to stay away from cussing, name calling, using phrases like always or never. You want to stay away from any kind of where you are insulting the other person in any way, shape, or form. You want to establish positivity. You want to establish a collaborative tone. You want to make it seem like you're being mutually beneficial. You want to make it sound like you're listening to them. Maybe things are like their idea or you're planting seeds for it to be their idea. You are responding with curiosity instead of anger. Okay. And if you are in a situation where it starts to get heated, where it's because where they start to become more personal, they start to become insulting or disrespectful. You can just say things, things like, thank you for the feedback, or again, start to look at them as if they are a third party having a tantrum on the floor. Don't take things personally. If you need additional support, join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Make sure that you take your break if you need to. You know, I always say SOS, stop and take a breath. Start observing them, observing them as if they're a toddler. And then S, stay calm. Don't allow them to let you get emotional. Never get emotional. Because if you do, then they have you, especially in high stress, high conflict situations. They will try to get under your skin. They're going to try to do that. You can say things like, I understand. I understand your perspective. I can see, I can see your way. I can see your way of doing things. You know, if you can start to say things like that, I can start to validate you. Then they'll start to be more amenable to listening to you. Fluff or favor, vomit later. And you can always do, you know, making a plan span where you make a, have an agenda or a scope before you go and talk to them and stick to that issue. Have a time frame. When that time frame is up, you get up, you go, you gotta go. I gotta, I gotta have an appointment. I gotta go get to. You stick to that one issue of the agenda and make sure they know about it ahead of time. Okay. So that when it goes beyond that scope, you can say, no, 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 this is the only thing that we're talking about today, as you know. So if you can do these things, say, I can do it in the comments. I can do it. And I would love to know which of these you think you can start to use first. You know, which ones have you used? I would love to know if you have others that have you, you have used that have been helpful for you. And if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share so that others can get this information, start using it as well, because people need to have access to this information. They need to be able to use it. They need to be able to find it helpful. The next video that I want you to watch is the only way narcissists will respect you if you do this, because there are certain things that narcissists will respect and certain things that narcissists do not respect. And I want you to know what those things are. So make sure you go watch that video next. Remember, I'm Rebecca Zung. I am the best-selling author of the book, Slay the Bully, How to Negotiate with Narcissists and Win. And I am a high conflict resolution attorney. I'm so glad that you were here. And I'm here to take you out of that drama, trauma, and chaos and put you into that life that you want, that life where you can breathe and see and have that joy and freedom that you want. And then you can turn around and help others do the same thing, which is even the best because that becomes your mission and that becomes your purpose. And, and that's what it's all about. All right. So I'm going to see you in the next video and I can't wait to dive into the only way narcissists will respect you, All right? Remember, today's a great day to start negotiating your best life, and I'll see you in that next video.